broadly in terms of thematics, I mean, we're all, in a way, we're kind of the antithesis, antithesis of a thematic investor. Um, we're not trying to make a call on how the world is going to change over the next 10 or 20 years. In fact, really the question that we asked ourselves is what's not going to change over the next 10 years, over the next 20 years? So in other words, you know, are people still going to be drinking beer in 10 years' time? You know, are people still going to need pharmaceuticals and medical devices in 10 years' time? Are people still going to need security services for their homes in 10 years' time? Are people still going to want to have a, a, a flutter on the lottery in 10, 10 years' time? Those are bets we're pretty comfortable making. Um, you know, on the other hand, uh, are we all going to be living in, in the, the metaverse uh, trading gorilla NFTs with bitcoins? You know, we'll, we'll leave that to people with better crystal balls than, than we have. The whole point of what we do is to try and avoid value traps. So, you know, economic franchises, if we actually think a business has an economic franchise and has, you know, barriers from a brand, from brand perspective, intellectual pros property, net network effects like Visa and so on, then we think it's unlikely they're going to be disrupted. But that doesn't mean it couldn't happen. And so we spend a lot of time worrying about that. Um, if you own an economic franchise, the barbarians are always going to be at the gate trying to get in. And so <laughs> we're always going to be looking for that. Um, one example that comes to mind is IBM, um, which uh, we actually owned in the portfolio many years ago. We'd included it in the universe. Um, and what the reason we actually kicked it out, we sold it and, and, and deleted it from the universe. Um, and the reason for that is that we were concerned about the rise of cloud computing. Um, and so IBM has a big systems integration business and has historically. Um, now the issue with cloud computing is that you're basically taking the hardware off corporate premises, so big servers and IT systems, and putting them into the cloud. And that means you're also taking a lot of the need for systems integration uh, and the people involved in that away as well. So we saw a threat um, to IBM. It hadn't materialised yet, but we felt like, you know, the question we always ask with, with technological disruption is, is this product a substitute or is it a complement to what the, the existing incumbent sells? In that case, it looked like a clear, a clear substitute, so we sold IBM. Uh, a converse example would be Microsoft in the same industry. So, you know, back in 2012, 2013, it's hard to remember now, but people were concerned about um, Microsoft being disrupted by cloud computing because people felt that that would enable startups to come in and sell software um, on, a, on, a, on a subscription basis um, and take some market share from, from Microsoft. We actually felt the opposite was likely um, because effectively what Microsoft was doing was they're going to companies and saying, look, we can save you 50% um, on your total cost of ownership of systems if you bring all of your software into the cloud. Um, at the same time, they could get, they could increase revenue per customer, and they had a captive installed base, so it was theirs to lose. Um, so we actually saw a, an opportunity for Microsoft from the same issue, um, and we and as I say, we owned it for many years through the transition to the cloud. If we delete a company from the universe, it's usually for a few reasons. One, it might have just gotten taken out, in which case it probably is by in, through M and A, so it, it may be actually permanently deleted. Um, second, it's been we think there's a disruption or structural change issue. Um, as uh, the IBM being an example of that. Um, uh, the, the other reasons that we delete companies from the universe, though, are often capital allocation. So, um, you know, companies, we find even in our universe, you know, capital allocation is a huge issue. Um, these businesses generate lots of free cash flow. How they deploy that free cash flow can be value creating or value destructive. There's a lot of M&A that gets done um, particularly over the past decade, that we think um, has been value destructive. And if that value destruction is too large in proportion to their business, we think, well, you're, you have bad capital allocation policies, so we're going to kick it out of the universe. Um, uh, the other reason that we delete companies from the universe is where they sort of de-worsify away from their core economic franchise. So they buy another business um, and, it's, and we don't think it has the characteristics that we're looking for. It's too big of a business and we'll, and we'll um, delete it from the universe. Uh, you know, we'll keep a watching brief on companies if we, if we, if we um, do um, delete them. But generally speaking, once they're out, they tend to stay out, to be honest. <laughs> Look, we always keep an open mind. Um, and we, we always, we're always excited to try and include a business in the universe if it makes it on, on our sort of test that we apply. Um, uh, in terms of energy in banks, it's extremely unlikely that we'll ever have anything in those sectors. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, we're effectively looking for businesses that have two characteristics. One, big barriers to entry, and two, forecastability. 
So we're looking for businesses that, ha that have forecastable long run cash flow streams because that's, that's the problem we think we all face as investors. We're all making forecasts um, and that's difficult to do. And so we're trying to you know, narrow down the, the forecasting error of the businesses we look at. Energy clearly doesn't qualify on that basis because you know, um, we have no idea what the oil price is gonna be like in, in 10, 15 years, nor do we know what the iron ore price or any other commodity price will be. Banks have the issue of leverage. Um, so they're typically highly leveraged companies. That's how they make their money. Um, and if you know you have um, a, a, a rise in bad debts um, on your on your balance sheet, it can be very very serious for the business, as we saw through the for the financial crisis for many companies. Um, in terms of utilities, we actually do include utilities, many utilities in 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 the universe because they are by definition typically monopolies providing essential services. So they meet that th those criteria of big barriers and forecastability. We do, however, exclude utilities that are merchant um, electricity companies that are more subject to electricity price movements. We much prefer the regulated utilities.